All right, guys, they're playing Riffin top lane, but this time I'm going to teach you guys, you know, how you can beat the Riffin versus any kind of ranged matchup. So this game we're playing specifically against a Gnar, which is a very, you know, good match to learn from. So what we have in this game is Conquer, Triumph, Alacrity, Last End, a Gathering Storm, and then also Transcendence. What I always recommend is a ranged matchup is going, going to be a D shield, and I'll show you why. Now, one of the like very easy ways of how you can actually like face off ranged matchups, right? If you're struggling in any of these, can be Urgot, can be Nar, can be whatever it is, you can actually start off level one with shield. Just play it out safe. Probably 90% of everyone that you play against are bound to like hard push level one or at least slow push to get the pressure, which is certainly like not a bad thing. I'll show you why. The good thing is that when you have like the wave shoving into you, you actually get it into a favorable position. Like you make it, um, for instance, when you let Nar push in level one and two, um, you put him into a position where he could be ganked. Um, but also, the closer the wave is to the tower, the better we can actually get our combos off of him, and the bigger the lane is to, to play around with, you know. So we're just kind of avoiding him. The, the worst thing that can happen right now is that Nar can do the cheater recall by like pushing uh, uh, like a massive wave in tower and then resetting. But I'm not so worried if he does that. Go for a trait. So that's what I'm talking about. The closer the wave is to the tower, the easier trading becomes because you can basically get dash in, dash out. Oh, he's dead. Got my jungle here. Oh. Okay. And that's exactly what I'm talking about. Like, if you have the wave close to your tower, you make it super gank, like, super gankable by your jungler. Secondly, you can trade better, you can farm better, everything goes a lot easier. And that's just one way of playing against ranged, ranged matchups, right? I'm not saying that you should do this every game, but this is like the easiest way to like approach, right? Just take it very easy, simple. Let's go back. We're going to go for Warhammer. Um, we're going to specifically go with Gorchinker this game. What you can also do against like ranged matchups is go for Prowler's Claw. Um, but I'm personally not a huge fan of like going Prowler's Claw, so... I don't really like that. Okay, now we just walk back. So, Graves is currently down here. Their jungler. He's pathing down here, so we don't have to worry about the jungle at all right now. So, I'm not going to place any wards down. So, we get into trading. There you go. Just going for a little quick trade. It's okay if he hits like a two autos and a Q. It's fine because I'm trading. Um, not only do I get a trade off against them, but I actually get the bone played off, right? Now I can actually trade him even better now. So. And now we're just going to wait. Now we're kind of relaxing. We're just going to let Nar do his thing. He's about to transform soon, so we're obviously not going to trade him right now. And he's got like a massive wave, so. How should I proceed? There you go. Okay. And now we just have to wave like up here. We're going to be looking into stacking the wave right now. The bigger the wave gets, the stronger you basically are, especially into these kind of matchups. Go for a trade, proc in the bone play. For the use of my potion, we're, go we're going to be looking into all inning him right now. I think I see Graves here. Yeah, Graves is there. Okay, he's not going to auto attack me. And he's dead. So... 
If he went to auto attack me, he would have actually lost that really hard because I could re-engage with my Q. And it seemed like Gnar wasn't going to auto attack me, which was pretty smart because he would t definitely take damage off of me, but I would definitely kill him for sure there. Um, but I kind of baited him into turning again and then trying to like fall for it. And luckily he did. I could like, I managed to get close enough, so. When you play against ranged matchups, you're going to be baiting quite a bit. And every move that you make, um, could like change the moving pattern of this guy, right? So what I, basically what I'm trying to say is like, you know how you adapt to your opponent, how they play, right? Well, that's basically the same, the opposite way. If we move around like in a safe way, we go for a tray, we go back. What likely happens is that your opponent's going to move up and try and kite you as you move backwards. But if you re-engage, they will kite back, right? They, they will try to move back and kite you. But if you do that really quickly without them noticing it, um, and you re-engage, they won't expect it, so. Uh, Graves is coming top, so we have to play safe here. Graves is currently down here, and I think he's pathing top side, so I place the ward down. Alright. Well, now we just wait here. We're not going to trade him. We're not even going to try because he's got a control ward, which means I got no vision. So I'm not going to go for trade because Graves could be up here. Staying like outside of the Q range. I'm actually go for a Q right here if he comes close at least. Nice. Okay, now we're going to be looking into just getting the bone plate off. There you go. And now I'm going to re-engage. Yep, here we go. Nice. Like I said, I fully predicted the Grave Skank right there, you see? And there you go. You see how I predict that gank right there, guys? I had no vision, right? I had zero vision because he took my ward with a Contra ward. But you see how predictable it can be, right? All we all we used was some decent knowledge of like where he's pathing. Let's go back. So the, the way how I knew was I saw him. I believe uh, if I remember correctly, I saw him here, and then pathing here. I believe, or I saw him right here pathing up here. Um, but yeah, either way, I used that. Alright, time to get back. So now we have Gorchinker, 9 minutes in the game. We are 4 now. Got a red buff, got flash. I'm gonna walk around because we're gonna cheese him. Whoop, I cancel my auto attack. You guys say you find it very hard to like track a jungler. Practice, man. Practice. Practice makes perfect. Um, people always say you should check the map every one or two seconds. And while that's true, um, you should be checking the map at all times. My spirit is not lost. Uh, it, it's kind of hard to explain. But for instance, Grace is balling right now, as you can see. You know, but as in like tracking junglers, yeah, it's it's a topic, it's a hard topic to talk about. I feel like people say, yeah, ju really good players. They always say like, yeah, I just watch the map every like one or two seconds. Yeah, that's true, but it's not just checking the map. You know what I mean? It's like you can watch the map, but like you gotta at least understand what's going on, right? So it's it's not like you should just take a glimpse at the map and there you go. No, not really. The thing is, um, you don't need to watch the map every one second. If you look at where, how everyone is moving, you have like a, a general idea of what's going to happen next. Right? For instance, uh, Gangplank right here is pushing mid lane. All right, so I I, keep, I just keep taking a look at him, see where he's going. 
If he's pathing top, sure, I'm gonna back off immediately, right? It's like you're not really watching the map like all the time. It's just you're looking at how they move. And then you put your eyes back on lane. So, yeah. I don't look at I don't look at the map every one second. I look at the map every one second when something's happening. But if I know exactly where everyone is and know exactly how everyone's pathing, I'm definitely not taking every second I look at the map. I'm more like every two seconds, I think. So, yeah. It really depends. You just gotta know like how to watch the map, you know. You gotta understand, you know, what's going on. What conflict Hmm. I can kill him, but he needs to get out of the transform. Okay. And he is dead. I don't see Grace though, but I'm going to risk it anyway. Thank you. Mm, Grace could be here. But if he shows up, I'll kill him, so... Nice, let's get some plates. Grace is in bot lane. Like, that's exactly what I'm talking about. Right now, I don't need to look at the map. I can guarantee you I'll, I'll be perfect if I if I don't look at the map for like 10 seconds long. Um, thing is, I know where Grace is. So, I know this guy is dead. I know Grace is bot lane. I know that Gangplank is up here. Like, pathing bot lane. And then pathing back mid, so... I don't need to look at the map every one second right now, if that makes sense, right? It's more like, I just gotta keep, um, the, the trick is you just gotta keep, like, tracking where they are. If you know exactly what they're doing, then you can just put your eyes back on lane, you know? So, yeah. But yeah, I, I always find it, like, a hard topic to talk about, you know, while playing the game at the same time. So, yeah. I've never really looked at the price. You, you, you guys know about these devices where it tracks your eyes? I wonder like what it would look like if I actually had a device that tracks my eyes in League. I, I, I really wonder like what kind of an experience that would be. Like maybe just for once. <laughs> Because I, I know it's like distracting for people, but like I wonder what it would look like, uh, what it would be like. Oh. Sorry, buddy. Alright, well, I'm gonna let that wave crash in. I'm gonna see if I can kill Graves. He's on wolves right now. Nice. Thank you, thank you. I think we can kill uh, Nargan. Yeah, talking about the topic, like the the, the mini-map for instance, it's something I can explain much easier if I, if I were to make like a full video about it, right? As in like opening up a notepad, like some paint and like drawing stuff and you know, it would be easier to do. It's hard to explain these kind of things from like being in the middle of a game of League, you know? So I often don't talk about these things when they're being asked. Because it, it kind of throws me off of the game, like... I can't pay attention to so many things at once, you know? A commentary... Play, playing leak, Paying attention, playing good, and then mixing it up with a commentary is... I, I got really used to it, so it's not that hard anymore, but... Um, yeah, like, as in, like, focusing on 
different topics all at once is really hard. Oh, you're gonna cleaned up, buddy. Nice. Uh, Nar is here. Okay. Thank you. Let's go back top. You guys say there's like a Twitch extension with uh with that device? Okay. I've never looked at the price of one of these things before. To be honest. I have no idea what kind of a price I could, it could be. I, I thought it was expensive. Choose your own path. The Nard doesn't show up anymore. Hmm. Oh, he does. Will he, um... Oh. Ah. <laughs> okay. And let's go back. Maybe we can kill Brand. Mm, it's a little bit of an overextend. Yeah, I can't. Oh, he still has R. <laughs> no, I got baited. <laughs> yeah, that was a terrible, uh, terrible start. Unfortunately. Uh, the, the thing is, like, it was perfectly winnable because I'm really fed. 2v3, of course. Um, but I had, like... Well, as you can see, I got, like, 3k gold in the pocket, man. I got way too much. Um, I'm personally thinking this game about just going for a death stance because they're full AD. Yeah. And then next item, I think maybe a GA for armor. Or we can maybe go Chainsword. This GP healing. So long, I've yeah, let's go. I'm gonna go Chainsword. Yeah, I, I know guys, you, you can make the mini-map from League. You can make it incredibly large like it's a, a new future they added like a year ago or something but i tried it once because i saw other people do it but i was like why would i do it when i'm used to watching like this right like for me personally like for a someone who can already like watch the map like perfectly i don't need to like resize my map because i'm used to it so yeah but maybe um, if you're new to League, it's certainly not bad, like, increasing the map size. Because that actually, a lot, like, it allows you to learn how to watch the map, I guess. Like, when I played League back in the day, like, the, the biggest size of the mini-map was this size right here. I remember I put it on max size all the time, which was 100. And it literally this small, actually, if, if you think about it now. And I believe now it's like 30 or 40. Um, Minimap scale. It's 33. That's the maximum. That used to be the maximum. So, yeah. I often already... Like, I often also get a question regarding why my... Um, my HUD is so big. <laughs> because I believe it's like maximum size, right? Um, I got a big reason for that. Um, yeah, it's max size. I want to talk about this later, actually. But there's a reason. Um, anyways, guys. This was Riven Top. Against like any kind of range matchup. Thank you so much for watching today's YouTube event.
and I'll see you next time. Peace.